Most people think that electrical engineers spend all day fixing outlets or wiring up panel boards, or maybe that we're sitting in a room surrounded by voltage sparks like Nikola Tesla. And I wish some of that were true, but the reality is that we actually spend most of our time on software. Electrical engineering is a very wide field, and there are many different subfields and specialties that you can get into. Today, I'll go over the five different types of software that you'll most likely encounter. If all that sounds good, please help me out by hitting that subscribe button. It helps the channel grow and helps me provide more of these videos to you. The first one is the one that you encounter in school here in the US. MATLAB and Simulink are provided to pretty much every engineering college. Simulation is important to understand. However, personally, I have not found much use for it in the real world. Now, I know that there are specific industries that do still use MATLAB and Simulink. I don't appear to be in one of them. So I'm in the power engineering field. And the only time I've ever used MATLAB and Simulink was during college. Simulation is required, especially when you don't have the component components to actually test and design and verify. I do understand why universities use MATLAB and Simulink. The idea is to get you to start thinking like an engineer, to be able to test everything you're doing so that if you are modeling, say a microgrid, you can do it on the software and then check the power wave forms and make sure that everything is going well with your transients and everything that goes along with it. However, to me, I feel that MATLAB and Simulink are probably a little bit overrated. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Another big one that we encounter is using a piece Spice or LT Spice. While that was very good in circuit analysis and creating breadboards and seeing how things are modeled, those I believe get outclassed by industry specific tools of which we'll dive into later. So really simulation is great when you're learning the principles and you're deep into theory, but it's nothing without actually trying to build something, right? This is where you need some real hardware. That's when design software comes into play, which is our next category. This is also where I spend the most of my time in. For substation design, we use a lot of these CAD softwares. So it's just a matter of getting getting these schematics created and drafted up so that whenever the field needs to print them out and actually construct something, they know how to use them. It's not necessarily about which software you use. It's just understanding kind of the design thinking. So for instance, let's say that you're a substation protection engineer and you went from utility XYZ that was using Bentley MicroStation. Now you're going to somebody who's using AutoCAD or AutoCAD Electrical or any other schematic software. You'll be able to pick the software up relatively quickly, probably in less than a couple weeks or a month at most, the best thing to do in any of these cases is to research whatever industry you're trying to get into and figure out what software is generally accepted there and start taking some online tutorials. You can find them not only on YouTube videos, but if you actually type in the software name and go online, you'll be able to download some trial versions because they want users. Download some trial versions, get your hands a little dirty if you've never played with these before, you can't break anything. It's always good to have a little bit of experience. And even if you just play with it for a couple weeks, I think it's safe to say that you can put on your resume, especially after you've built a few of your own projects. All you have to do then on the resume is to put Bentley MicroStation or AutoCAD Electrical, and you can put, you know, your level of expertise, right? Intermediate or advanced or introductory, whatever you think is correct. Now, the ones that I personally use are Bentley MicroStation and AutoCAD Electrical. And that's because I'm in the power industry, as mentioned, and I do a lot of substation design, specifically in the protection control side. So those prints and those schematics are created on those software types. Okay, so simulation and design are great, but the engineers, that really start to stand out are the ones that can begin to automate some of these processes, which brings us to the third type of software tools that you might use. And those are now programming and automation based. Think of what you'd learned in MATLAB. You learned some baseline level programming. You've, now it's time to probably transition yourself into Python or C++, things of that nature. There's a couple guys that I work with and they enjoy coding and they're the ones who have created these little sub tools that we use, for instance, for MicroStation software that helps us out with our design. It it doesn't necessarily do any thinking for us, right? It's not doing anything theoretical, but it's things like creating data sheets or creating lists of drawings that we're using or pulling out the wire tag codes for wires that are going between panels in the substation. Those things can take a lot of time, the tedious repetitive things that can be automated. That's what you wanna start thinking about. And that's where the software tools can really come in handy. So one thing to note is that not every electrical engineer needs to know how to code, but in most cases, it does help you out. I actually made a video about that it's do electrical engineers need to code? I dive into a couple different ideas and topics there. Check that out if you want to. Another great example is learning how to do VBA for Excel. So my father is also an electrical engineer and gosh, he's made his whole entire career. He's a sharp guy, that, that's, <laughs> that it's not just that, but he's made a name for himself by understanding how to make tools using VBA. And he does this very well at a high level and he's able to do multiple designs and get into theory using these tools. But even if you're amazing, 
using all the technical stuff, right? You've gone through the simulations, you've done your CAD design, you've made tools that help you automate. None of that really matters unless you can communicate your ideas. And that might mean getting into the fourth category, which is understanding software and having a good know-how in documentation and communication. And those are all the MS Office Suite type softwares. So you have to know how to use Teams properly, right? How to coordinate projects, how to show figures in Excel, how to make PowerPoint presentations, even how to properly write, okay? So all these software tools and skills are required if you're really going to have a well-rounded body of work. Excel is learned at a really young age. So no matter what you're doing, you're always gonna run into spreadsheets of some sort. And if you dive deeper in into managerial type stuff, which I'm doing now, you have more and more spreadsheets to look at. And now specifically, most companies do use Teams and OneNote and obviously Outlook. And there are a lot of interesting things you can use there with AI to automate your workflow. So just become more organized. So I do encourage you to take advantage of those and learn about them and don't discard them. Now for the part of the video that most people don't really talk about, the software that defines your career based on your industry. I've already touched on a few of them. So no, I cannot comment on every single industry because as mentioned, the EE field is massive. Here are the ones that I've uncovered for various industries that show up in search results. And as mentioned, I'm not an expert. I understand the power industry well, but in the telecom space and other spaces too, I do have friends, family, and colleagues in those spaces. And if you guys like, I can probably try to get one of them on and we can have a conversation and dive deeper into that field. But for now, I'm gonna go over a few different industries. So first one is power as mentioned, and there are various softwares there. We already talked about the CAD software that's required, such as AutoCAD Electrical, Bentley MicroStation. Then you also have specific simulation type software. So for grounding analysis, you'll have software such as CDEGS or ETAP. Then you have PSCAD for power systems, computer aided design software, and that's a simulation based one. Then you have power PLS CAD for power line systems, and that's with transmission lines. There, that's just really scratching the surface on that one industry alone. In telecom and RF, you have ATOL for propagation analysis, that one pops up. Then there's also path loss for planning wireless links, and it's a widely used microwave design software. And then of course, they're also using Python for data analysis and software AI tools such as Databricks or Snowflakes. It really does depend on what role you get into. For controls and automation, if you're in the Siemens world, you'll use a lot of TIA, their proprietary software, and that's good for PLC programming, HMI interfaces, and device drives, and things of that nature. Then there's also the Rockwell 5000 software, and that's good for the Allen Bradley Logix controllers. So it really depends on who you're working for and what they're using. The problem is that you probably won't know that until you dive into a role deeper. So my suggestion is learn some of these other ones that we've mentioned, because the person who understands the theory and understands the software the best, that person is irreplaceable, right? That's how you want to start thinking about it. So if your company is offering up any trainings, take them, be proactive, see what trainings are free. To me, the best way to do that is to kind of reverse engineer the career that you want to have. I made a video talking about that and how most people just pick the major that they want to go into, but they don't actually think about where they want to end up. So in this video, we discussed a lot of different topics. My suggestion to you is to take a little bit from each one. So in the simulation software, Software, you already have a good baseline if you've gone through the educational system. You should already have a decent simulation background to your name and even some programming if you've done a little bit of MATLAB. That's always good to know. Then in CAD, make sure that you know at least one of the CAD softwares. Figure out if it's neither of those ones that I've mentioned. Maybe your industry has certain other ones, but have some decent CAD background. Then understand a little bit of programming. You don't have to be an expert, even if it's just vibe coding. It's just understanding how to use AI tools tools to help you build tools on top of software. That's also crucial. And then of course, understanding how to use these Microsoft Office products, specifically Excel. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments if I've missed something. Let me know your thoughts of what software that you're learning and what you're using. I read and try to respond to every single comment. If you're deep in your career and if you're curious about what I would do differently, check out this video here where I go over everything that I would do now if I were to restart my career today.